What's up guys? Lotrin1 here. Today we'll be doing a build, flight, and review of the Oxet PV Thug Classic. I didn't go with the light, I'll explain why later, but first I contacted Ox and it was like, yes, pronounce Ox, not OXFPV. Contacted them. Hey, I plan to buy a frame. Am I sending me a second one so I can do a giveaway in the review? Yeah, sure, no problem. Day went by. Hey, do you mind if we get your YouTube info? Yeah, sure, no problem. Here you go. Another day went by. <sighs> Regret to inform you you're not famous enough or blah, blah, you know, something along those lines. So I don't have one for a giveaway. Sorry, guys. Now, the main reason I keep holding it like this and waving it is because it's got a little flag on there. Really proud of that flag. Made in the good old US of A. It's going to be my little Merkel frame. I know there's a frame called Merkel out already by Catalyst Machine Works or something like that. I got one on the way, thanks to. Now, back to the frame. This is made of HDPE plastic, high density polyethylene plastic. Pros to that, not that heavy. Actually, this is about 127 grams. It's a pretty heavy frame. Well, I fly freestyle, so it's not a big deal. Second, does not conduct electricity. Um, yeah, so if you have a wire that's got a burn in it when you're soldering or whatnot and it touches the frame, no problem. <laughs> does not conduct electricity, won't short it out. Second, does not conduct electricity. <laughs> Carbon fiber blocks your radio frequency waves because it conducts, like, there's other hundreds of videos and you can find them. I'm not going to get into it. But when your frame, say this is my little VTX antenna. Ooh. Normally it doesn't wobble like that. When you do a roll or whatnot, your signal's being blocked by your frame via carbon fiber conducting electricity. This bad boy? No. Not at all. Uh, radio frequencies go right through it. Less likely to fail safe, drop video, etc., etc. Awesomeness. Now, I'll go while I'm building, explain the little cutouts and everything. I'm going to save a little bit of time on this little intro. But the tolerances on this thing are amazing. They have some great cuts, and I understand it's a machine doing all the work, but it's got a great design, little fuselage, FC, etc., etc. It's got cutouts for your XC60, BTX antenna. If you want to run a battery, bottom mounted, it's got little wire ports. Plenty of ventilation. At first I thought, hey, you know, man, my VTX might overheat because you see this and there's not many holes, but you flip it over, boom, plenty of ventilation. Now these things right here. First I thought they were landing pads. I was like, ah, those are little weird landing pads. But they're not. They're actually a battery tray. Got your little fo uh, works for forest, not necessarily for five or six. You didn't make little cuts and slides so you can move them out. Let's see you walk. Now, boom. Battery set, let's go fly. No, uh, need a battery strap. I highly recommend one. There's that. Um, Talk about a couple of little negative things I didn't like when I first got this frame. Very little. One, where the motors are sunk in, great protection. But there's a little groove cut for your wires and your ESCs. But the little groove right there is kind of steep, so it folds the wires that come off the bottom of your motor up. I don't like that. So I'm going to take my Dremel and pull that out a little bit. Uh, number two, biggest thing that I was, this bothered me a lot. Ox, y'all have a machine doing this. It takes 10 seconds to cut this, but drill like a little line right there, or cut a line, so we can mount our cameras. I understand you. we're all custom builders. We all know how to use a Dremel or a hand drill or file or whatnot, but take you two seconds to go whoosh, done. Camera can be mounted. I'm going to bust out my Dremel when we're building, but that's about the only two negatives I can really come to on this frame. Other than the weight, it's 127 grams, I think, with everything on it. it. Has a, I've already taken it apart because I wanted to see the innards, but it has a little camera guard as well. It goes like that. Awesome. Now, for the build, I will be using 2205, 24, or 2300 KV motors. They are the Chi Pass motors from Quad Box. Uh, I'm a subscriber, yes, and I haven't had the chance to fly them. They feel nice. For the price, you can't beat it, especially if you crash a lot like me. I'll run those in there. Like I said earlier, the wires tend to bend up. I'm going to dremel. That's, that's already bothering me. G-Pass motors. 
I'll be using the Wolf Whoop Q1 uh, VTX, which I found out is a Race Day Quad Mach 2 clone. I 99% of the time try to avoid buying clones for one. I want to support the people that design this stuff and, you know, I don't think it's fair to them that someone can clone them and outsell them. That's just not cool. So if this VTX works, then I'll buy the Race Day Mach, 1, Mach 2 VTX. Support the, support the designers, not the cloners. Next, I have a X rotor stack, which is the Yes, this one already has soldering on it because it came out of another frame. I didn't have the FC at the time. I was running the HDLRC F4 V5 Pro VTX all-in-one light controller. Man, that's a mouthful. Now, 4-in-1 ESC, 40 amps on each motor. Should be good for these motors. More than enough. F4 Rotor X flight controller. Pins right in. No wires. No, no signal wires. So cleaner build. OSD, yada yada yada, good to go. Oh, and I'm trying to save weight, so I'm running the Runcam Micro. Save me a couple grams there. And the FR Sky XM Plus, another couple grams I can save there. And those are all the components, guys. Oh, I plan to put some red and white, or red LEDs and blue LEDs. It's gonna be there. Now, let's get into the build.
You've seen it fly. Um, let me go over the pros and cons and my little final thoughts about this bad boy. Let's go with the pros. This thing is a tank. I have put this through some serious crashes. I've destroyed about 10 sets of props. Not intentionally, I'm just not the best pilot, but you know. Gotta go hard or it don't count. Um, the weight, oh, uh, that's in the cons. I'll get to that in a second. Prop wise, on these little cheap ass motors, they're only like $8.99 a piece, which is insane. 2205, 2300. I started with the HQ. 5x4x3 by by or 5x4.2x3 by by and they didn't have enough bite and I shattered a bunch of them so I moved up well I also tried the Gemfam Wind Dancers they, the 5042 same uh, I tried these Racecraft clones of the Azure Props 5048s these had some great bite to them it was just a little bit of oscillations I didn't like and I finally ended up going with these Race uh, race Star I'm sorry, these were Raystar clones, those were the other ones. Uh, Raystar 5048s, these were given to me by a buddy, he gave me a whole bunch of bags that he didn't like them, and these things are awesome. I know they're clones, and I don't promote clones, but I need to buy some Racecraft props, because these things are epic, these are just the clones. Now, um, cons, let's go into the negatives. I don't like how the frame, when you run a run cam micro, you can see the frame, the camera guard. I doesn't bother me that much, but I'd rather not see it. Um, I'm going to swap it out for the Runcam Swift. Hopefully the lens pushed out a little bit further won't be in the way as much. Uh, the battery track, or whatever you want to call it, where you set your battery. If you swap it to the top, you can't use this camera guard, which I want the camera guard. I crashed a lot. So I left it on bottom as, uh, what's it called, landing pads. Now... The other con is the weight. All in the air with battery and antenna, props and all, 615 grams. For those of y'all that want to race in an ultralight, this is not really for y'all. I mean, you could race if you put bigger motors and aggressive props. I'm pretty sure you could get away with it. But those of y'all that want to go ultralight builds, this one's not for you. But for me, I like to freestyle. I'm not much of a racer. Just because I'm not. It is awesome as a freestyle. It's got the momentum. When I throw a punch out, it'll stay just coasting. And it is awesome. I love it. And I even had let my nephew, who's looking to get in the hobby himself, take a swing at this because I wasn't too worried about breaking it. He flew it and crashed it about five times on one pack. I mean, he'd get it up. I started him in acro, which was not very smart. And then I put him in uh, horizon mode where, you know, we're self-leveling. So... I don't know many of y'all, but I normally don't let people that have never flown before try my quads. This one I had no doubts in my mind. Um, in one of the videos you'll see a crash where I hit a branch and I crashed into some PVC. And I obliterated that PVC. Just demolished that piece. And all I really got from that was a couple scratches and a dent in these motor guards. And these motor guards are awesome. The ones cut into the frame, epic. Other than that, guys... I really can't find any faults in this frame. The reception never got interfered when I was flipped over or whatnot. Um, DVR footage. I don't have a run cam mount. Or excuse me, a session mount yet. I'm gonna have a buddy 3D print one for me. Uh, but this thing just kills it. For beginner frames, I would highly, highly recommend it. For you freestyle pros, I'd run this too, just because I mean we crash. We're not perfect. And if you crash, all you really do is get some scratches in this plastic. It's epic. I I mean, I can't say any, po any more positive things about it. I never had an issue with heat. Never had an issue with anything, really. And this is one of my first builds where I crashed it and wasn't worried about breaking parts. And that's a, that's a great feeling. I actually was trying more aggressive things, throwing it around, trying to hit gaps and loops and whatnot. And I would just... I'd give this, for durability, a 10 out of 10. Weight, 6 out of 10. You know, there's heavier frames and lighter frames. Uh, I mean, Ox, y'all did something right. Only a couple, like I said, the only t couple negatives. Run a regular run cam, your camera won't be in the frame. This battery tray, can't put it on top unless you take the camera guard off, which I didn't really like. I don't even use it, but like I said, I use it more for the landing pads. And I managed to stick some fancy LEDs on it. Actually, let me power that up so y'all can check that out. 
America, because it's made in the good old USA. Red, white, and blue, baby. Um, other than that, guys, I want to do a couple shout-outs. First and foremost, actually, let me get to the giveaway. Oops, can't just kind of one-handed. The giveaway. Now, uh, there was only four comments on that video, so I had my son pick the favorite comment. Uh, so ZFGFPV, you sir, just want to patch triple feed patch antenna. Check your spam email inbox, whatever you got to check. I'll be getting in touch with you. Um. Oh, yeah. shout out. little chingo in the background. I told you he's gonna make noise. Uh, shout out to Stu from UAV Futures. He'll be getting me a. He's sending me a Catalyst Machine Works frame. The Merca frame, which I can't wait to build. I got some Gorilla, Gorilla 2507 yeah. motors I'm going to throw on there. It's going to be a 6S monster. Can't wait. And Ox. Another thing. That was battery strap. Not very resilient. Love the rubberized part, but one crash and that strap was ruined. Sadly. So I'm using one of my other cheap ones. But other than that, Ox FPV, they're doing something right, guys. Check them out. Get a frame, they're only 50 bucks I think right now, and a frame that you can have little to no fear of crashing when trying out stuff. I, I mean, you can't beat it. You really can't. I'll flash some pictures of the, the, in, the under the hood and whatnot. Here, I got my strap right into the top. Got my Velcro over my Merca stamp so it's protected. Alrighty guys, that's that. Remember, live free and fly hard.